We're here at the Liberty Street Robot Supply and Repair Shop. Someday there may be real robot repair shops. That day may be coming sooner than we think. So we decided to ask an expert, will artificial intelligence bring us closer to having robots in our homes? So tell us, what is the ultimate goal for researchers working on artificial intelligence? Well, the ultimate goal, going back to the foundations of uh, AI, um, has been to create an artificial mind, to um, build a mind that has the same sort of flexibility and capabilities that a human mind has, or even more. How close are we to true artificial intelligence? It's, it's, it's very current, this topic about thinking about whether the path we are on will really get there or not. I mean, in the early days of artificial intelligence, people tried to uh, really focus on this overall intelligence, sort of human-level intelligence. The current success has been by breaking it down into its different pieces, image understanding, um, text understanding, um, speech understanding, those sorts of things. The question is, can we then assemble it? Can we put it together? How do we integrate these separate aspects of our intelligence into this flexible competence, this ability to, to behave in the world and achieve our goals? So how far are we? It's hard to tell. What's your research focused on? One of the things that fascinates and interests me is when we get to the point that we can engineer the bodies to go along with the artificial minds, what would motivate it? What would drive its behavior? Why would it do what it does? Evolutionarily, you would argue that we do what we do for, uh, you know, to be able to pass on our genes as effectively and, and effectively as possible. Why would robots? What would drive, what, why would they get up in the morning? How important is a human-like appearance? Let's ask a slightly different question first and then get to this one. You know, how important is the artificial mind be like our brains, like the actual uh, material that our brains are made of? Not really, right? It's, it's more about our capabilities. Say a robot that lives in our home is a companion in our home. Well, our homes are built for us, so it, it would make sense for that robot to have legs so it can walk around the same place as we do and, and so on. Having said that, uh, we're, we're okay to talking to our phones uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that's quite different from we adapt. If the research really works, where will artificial intelligence take us? The thing to uh, remember about that is that it's not that there will be nothing of use until we've done solved the entire AI problem already. Most of us interact with AI in interesting ways. For example, when you search in Google, when you talk on the phone, and there's an automatic speech recognition-based system at the other end. So you can imagine uh, many, many stepping stones of usefulness along the way. If we achieve our goal of really co competent artificial minds, how would they be used? They would be, you know, I think society has to figure that out. Will they be our companions? Will they be our servants, you know, remote workers for us? Will they be, um, will we outsource work to them? I mean, these are all really interesting questions that we are not quite ready to answer because we're not there yet. We're making progress towards developing Android robots that can think on their own. Researchers are working on different aspects that will allow them to make decisions, to have motivations, to actually have real emotions. So it might not be too long before each of us has our own robot companion. 